He's on His throne.
I say this much, it's good to be in church today and to know we do have a wonderful Savior. And, uh, you know, I get involved with so many things in this life, but uh, he is all, all that matters. Uh, no matter, uh, <clears throat> you know, it's, sometimes you just think about just the balance. There's a, there's a balance to this life we're living. You know, we uh, can put so much time. Sometimes we get busy during the day, and my, and my wife asked me, say, it's 8 o'clock already. And I said, well, yeah. We, uh, you know, we, we all get 24 hours a day. But, uh, and uh, it just depends on what we do with it, you know. Uh, <clears throat> I'm a little bit uh, time conscious myself, but I, I know you can't always do that either. But, uh, but I, I, I watch the clock a lot, you know. I guess working longer than I did, I had to watch the clock, you know, be where you're supposed to be, when you're supposed to be. And, you know, I work at a job where you had 15 minutes to break. Of course, they weren't too strict on you, but still, you was, you know, you had to kind of pay attention to that. But uh, anyway, uh, but we live in a life that where we, we have restrictions uh, of all sorts, and, and we have to sort it out, and we have to try to balance our life to where, that's why it doesn't bother me to read my Bible through every year because I know if I do that, uh, that makes me give God some attention, okay? I mean, at least that much, reading the Bible. Uh, I just, sometimes I don't seem like I run out of time or uh, get busy doing stuff, but uh, and I'd say, you know, I think about the 24 hours a day. You know, you get 24 hours a day. Uh, you, so it just depends on what you want to do with it. You can waste it, or you can spend time and 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 have a profitable day. At the end of the day, you look at it and say, "What, what have I done today? What have I done that's profitable?" But you know, you can't go back and do it again. You you can't uh, do it over. You know, like in school, you had makeup tests. You maybe didn't do so good on the first test, and you had. You got to make it up or whatever. But in this life, you don't, you don't get to make it up, you know. You got to do whatever you got to do when it's time to do it. And uh, you may not, may not get a chance to uh, go back and redo. So that's why I, uh, I try to get some consciousness about God and uh, realize that I got to... I, I look at some of the things in the Old Testament where... I was reading one time where the Levites, uh, they all had their jobs, you know, when they were uh, working in the, around the sanctuary. And, and one of the jobs for them was to uh, praise God in the morning. I, I can't remember if they did it in the evening. But anyway, that was their job. You know, it's not like, you know, we, we talk about praising God, you know, especially when you realize how blessed you are. And you begin to realize that, you know, you didn't, you didn't always do what the, what was right to get these blessings, but God did it. It was God that blessed you, and you don't mind praying. But suppose, would you have, like to have a job of praising God every day, every morning? That was your job, to get up in the morning and begin to praise God. You know, uh, <clears throat> actually, uh, that's really not a bad deal, but uh, I appreciate... Uh, what I'm hearing, I appreciate the the word, Brother Smith. I, I I'm with you on Monday nights, <laughs> and I appreciate. I was listening to <clears throat> Brother Smith this past Monday night, and he made a statement about uh, uh, Ezekiel and Revelation. He said that you know God pronounced a lot of judgment on on Israel on His people, and uh, he was saying that. Ezekiel was uh, Israel apocalypse. And uh, he said, Revelation is a Gentile apocalypse. You know, God God's going to have what his intentions are to have. He's going to have, he's going to have people that want to do right. That's what he's, his bottom line is, is righteousness. And he's going to have it one way or the other. 
because we uh, we are not our own. Okay, God has made us. He said, "You, you didn't make yourself. It is He that made you, not yourself." And I mean, when you think about it, you come in this world and you had nothing to do with it. You're in this world, but you didn't bring yourself in it. But you're here. So uh, when you find out, that's why I get an instruction from uh, God's people, God's ministers, showing us that, look, we're, gonna, we're in this world, okay? We're going to have to live. You, can, you don't have to. You're a free moral agent. You, can, you don't have to live for God. Isn't that something? You know, we, we're in a place, in a, in a world that uh, uh, we are blessed in this country to have a lot of benefits. And, uh, and like Brother Smith pointed out a bunch of times, but if you visit any of the third world countries uh, where they don't have it quite like this, of course I can go back to when I was raised, I didn't, <laughs> we didn't have it quite like this. I was raised as a, as a poor person on a farm with, as cotton uh, sharecroppers, okay? You know, I don't know if you you may not relate. I tell my daughter about this sometimes. She, and she, I like, well, I, didn't, I wasn't living then, you know. But, you know, and I can understand she may not be able to relate to the thing that I relate to growing up. And uh, so anyway, uh, and, and that's, we have to, God, I believe God consider that. I believe really God consider uh, your, your upbringing, where you came from, you know. But I think we're all going to have to eventually somehow uh, be able to see God, you know, that's when, and see what God is interested in and what he is uh, promoting and what, he is, uh, uh, what his plans are for us. And that's, that's a lifetime endeavor, even just to find out about God and in this world, you know, it's, like it's been said, you know, there's a lot of distractions going on in this world. You can get, you can get sidetracked. You can, you can get involved with things that, like the song said, that don't matter. Some things that really don't matter. I, I, I've been involved with things, to, and to find out, I, I spent a lot of time doing things that really, it didn't matter, you know. It, didn't, it really didn't, uh, uh, wasn't profitable. And, and that's sometimes you have to find out from God what's, what's profitable. What should I be doing, Lord? What should I be spending my time? Uh, I'm, like I say, I'm time conscious. So I, I, uh, I, I'm, I, I don't, sometimes I might let time slip up on me, but most of the time I know what, pretty much what time it is. <laughs> and uh, in God's work, that's what we, it's a, it's a lifetime experience. You just might as well just say, I'm going to just live for God and, and see what, <clears throat> somebody say, I'm going to keep running on, to see what the end is going to be. And that's what we want to just keep, we have to keep working with God because God does have a plan. We just have to get on board with him. You know, get uh, our mind. You know, it's, it's so much with serving God. You know, just a lot of things you can, like he said, his thoughts, you know, our thoughts are not like his thoughts. You know, we have to get a, a, a mindset, you know, to serve God, to find out, God, what, how should I think, Lord? How should I uh, 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 even... Uh, in this world, you know, there's a lot of things that could affect you. You know, uh, we, uh, we endeavor, we <laughs> uh, get in, involved with so many things, and, uh, but uh, some things uh, can affect you in a, in a bad way. You know, it can, can be a, 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 step, a setback for you, where you, it will keep you from doing what you, what you know to do. To do. Some things we don't, may not know what to do, but then there are things that we do know what to do. It's just a matter of doing it, a matter of taking time. And that's what I have to kind of grapple with sometime in life is to, uh, to Lord, what should I uh, spend, you know, my time on? And, and some of it is, uh, is like daily. You know, we, <clears throat> I can look out there in the future and say, well, 20 years from now, of course, I, can't, I probably can't say that. But anyway, you like you know you can look out there and say what you want to do, but really, I, I might ought to be considering what I should be doing daily. You know, not not so much out so far away, but uh, daily. And if we can do that daily, you know, get our mind on God. Consider Him.
you know, I've heard, I, I don't do this really, but anyway, I heard people say when, when I get up in the morning, you know, thank God for even seeing this day. You know, I mean, I do that some, but, but uh, that's, we have to just start with the little things, you know, little things, being thankful, uh, being, uh, uh, having uh, a mind to even, I heard a man say one time, said that the, the, uh, the question is, what, what are you doing for others? How, you know, and I do that question myself sometimes, and, and you can't really, even if you're doing something for somebody else, you know, what are you doing for other people? You know, not just yourself. And, uh, but you can get exalted in doing things, you know, even if you're doing the right thing. And, you, and, 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 and with serving God, you can't get uh, exalted about hardly anything. I guess nothing, you know. And uh, that's why you just you do it and you have the right attitude while you're doing it. That's hard. But anyway, uh, God is good to us, and I'm just so thankful that uh, I have an opportunity. And see, I've learned that since I've been in this church, is to realize that I didn't have to get this opportunity, but God has given me an opportunity to learn more about him and to learn more about what he's involved in, uh, his people, first of all. I just, we just buried a, a dear sister of mine, and uh, of course, you know, in the religious world, they, uh, uh, I don't know why I never noticed it so much, but I know I've heard it, but anyway, the preacher, the pastor, she got, got some mental situations she had, Got, got a pretty bad with it, and she had to <clears throat> stay where her kids were. She didn't have to leave, leave Arkansas and leave out in Oklahoma. But, uh, but anyway, her pastor that she was going to church with, and she did live here in Arkansas, he, he did the funeral. He did the eulogy, and, uh, and she did. She, she, I won't say she did the best she could. She may have done the best she could. She lived, lived for God. And, uh, but anyway, at the, at the grave site, he... Uh, he had a little book that he was reading from. And, uh, of course, in, in church, he had already said, you know, she was, uh, you know, that she was, uh, I don't know if he used the word heaven, but anyway, he, uh, he felt like she was with the Lord, I put it that way. And, uh, but when he got to the cemetery, he was reading this little booklet and was talking about a general resurrection in the general resurrection, and I was thinking, I don't know, I've, I've heard that, you know, that that's what happened, you know. But see, we, we are so informed with this group of people to where we, uh, we are affected by death. It does affect all of us, and it, uh, it's hard to uh, give up a loved one. But at the same time, uh, we realize what, where, where people are going when they die. You know, I mean, and, and we've been taught that. So when you go to a funeral, no matter what's being said about it, you can know for yourself, you know, that, you know, and, and, and to be safe, you can just say they're in God's hand, you know, if you want to. You know, just leave it like that. That's, that's okay, you know, because, uh, and really that's the way it is. God, he said it, it was, uh, Say what I'm trying to think about. It was appointed man once to die, is that right? And then after that, the judgment. So really, you're putting it in God's hand. You're not, uh, that, it's, it's up to God, really, you know, how we, but we have to, we know that we have to uh, uh, live to where, we know that. But it, we're not maybe the one that make the, Judgment on the God's the one that's gonna do gonna make the judgment, but we know that righteousness is what God wants in us. He wants us to to like Jesus. He loved righteousness. And he gave him what? The oil of gladness above his fellows. Because he loved righteousness. You know, and I was thinking about that this morning when Brother Smith was talking about righteousness. Uh just the natural things we do in life, uh, if you, you know, don't cheat anybody, you, you're honest, and you endeavors or whatever you're doing, you're, you're an honest person. 
but, but it goes farther than that. You know, just being naturally honest and naturally fair when you're dealing with people, just naturally. There's a lot of people do that, and they're not serving God. So there got to be more to being righteous in God's eyesight than just being uh, honest and fair and doing treating your fellow man right. You know, that's, that's part of it. You know, that's what we should do. But, it, but I think th- there's a spiritual side to righteousness that I feel like that, that somehow you're going to have to, uh, uh, in, you know, recognize God in, in, what, in your life to, to the point to where you want to be righteous in God's eyesight. Not just naturally so, but, but spiritually, you know, to be righteous uh, in what you're doing with God's inv- involvement. You know, consider God, you know. I like the, the one scripture Brother Smith read about the, in the day of adversity. Consider. Just consider that, you know, this may be something that I need in my life. You know, sometimes things that come against us is, is, is something that we need. You know, it may be hard to take, but it's at the same time, we need, to, we need to go through that. And sometimes God allows his people to go through things that, uh, that is hard. It's really hard. I, I read about, you know, read your Bible. It's all in it, some of his prophets. I was thinking about Jeremiah. He was, uh, he was just doing what he was supposed to do. He was prophesizing for God, to God's people. Telling them, warning them in some cases, look, this is going to happen. If you don't do this, if you don't continue to obey God, if you don't continue to do what God has asked you to do, then this is going to happen to you. You know, and he got thrown into a dungeon and uh, and looked like he wasn't going to make it. But that was a man, uh, I think he was an Ethiopian. Uh, but anyway, he, he, he helped get Jeremiah out of this dungeon. But uh, anyway, and I was thinking that, you know, God looked at that, and he and this man that helped Jeremiah, God helped him. You know, God God sees what we do, what we're doing, and I don't think uh, we uh, we don't like somebody say God don't owe you anything. You know, if if you're done doing the right thing, and He helped you, He He'll He'll He He see that. You know, God see our, our, what we're doing, and that's that's what I want to do. I want to be. We are. Are visible to God, no matter what we're doing, we're visible. So anyway, I'm just so thankful today that we're in a place where we can can uh, have a, a brighter light. And the light's going to get brighter. That's what we're saying. The, the light's going to get brighter. We're in, a, we're in a lot of light already, but it's going to we're going to be in a day where everything there's no shadow turning. When you when it's, when <laughs> I, I just appreciate you know when you're in a place where you can see I mean sometimes you know you don't want to see what what's being shown to you but anyway we want we that's what I want I'll put it that way I want I want to see I want to have uh, eyes to see what God is doing even though it may not look good to me you know I might not like it but I want I still want to see you know show me <laughs> you know God can show us and I appreciate uh, having that uh, like I said that opportunity to be in a place where the light does get bright, and it's, it's going to get brighter. But don't we want to go with God, want to go with his people? I want to be a part of what God is doing uh, in, a, in a world, be a light in a dark world. We, we are lights. We are lights, and, uh, and people, people do see you. And uh, you want to, uh, not that you want to be seen, but you are seen. You know, we are, we're lights. Uh, eventually, God's people, I remember one time Brother Roark was, well, this is not God's people, but anyway, he was, talk, he was talking about uh, South Korea and North Korea. And I don't know, he, I don't think he was in a plane that flew over, but he was just saying, because North Korea is a communist country, and they are, their government is a dictator chip type government and uh, he was just talking about flying over the two countries and South Korea is of course they are commercialized I I assume they're democratic but anyway uh, he was talking about you flying over South Korea 
and everything at night when you when the lights are on, and it's everything is lit up. But then when you keep flying, you fly over North Korea, it's almost dark. It, I, I mean, they just he was telling this one time I was listening to it. I, I never thought about it, you know, because they they're not they're not industrialized. The two they're two countries they're really on the same island, but they're just there's two different countries. And uh, they, they, South Korea, as far as if you want to call it a blessing to be so, to have all of the commercialization that they have, but in, in a sense it is a blessing, but still at the same time, you know, uh, and that's where it's in God's, God's kingdom. You know, we're in a place where we, got, we, we have light. God has blessed us to have light. We, we're, not in the dark, we're not in darkness. We're not in darkness. We have light. We can, we know like I say, it's, it's kind of scary in a sense because we know what God expects of us and what, he, what his intentions are for us to be righteous. You know, we hear that. We hear that. We keep hearing that. And I guess we need to keep hearing that. We got to be righteous. We got to, our lives got to have to line up with God, you know, eventually. We got to get in step with him. Uh, we got to be uh, people that love God. I love righteousness. Don't you like it? Just love. Now, how do you get that? I mean, I don't, I don't think it just happened, you know, overnight, but, but it takes a while, you know, to begin to see things. And then you, what you can see, you can compare it with, you can compare it with the, the world. You can, you can see people that, uh, that uh, in the world that not want to serve God, and you can look at it. I mean, you don't want it said not to compare yourself among yourself. But anyway, you can see people that are that are not living for God. And then, and I, what I do, I look at uh, the church people. Uh, I look at you, you people. I mean, I look at and and uh, look at your life and and your age. You know, that that's uh, people around here live live a long time and uh, and. Uh, and I think that's a blessing from God. And I think uh, when we live a certain lifestyle, I think it's a blessing. God, God is blessing his people. I, I can see it. He's blessing his people. And if you can stay with God, he, I, I, the blessings come. That's part of the package with God. Amen. You're going to be blessed if you stay with God and, and give your life to him. He's going to bless you. And I've I just seen that. I mean, I've been here long enough to see that God's blessings are up on his people. And sometimes, you know, you have to, like I say, go through things. We, we all go through things. And, uh, but if you can realize it's, it's for your good, you know, some things are just for our good. And it's going to help. If, you know, we want to help. Uh, uh, to, to, you know, sometimes you, you do things, go through things to help somebody else. You know, what you've gone through, you can use that to help somebody else that's going through it. And sometimes... People go through things that they can't hardly get, you know, mentally or emotionally or whatever. They can't get, can't hardly get past it. And that's the other thing that you can help somebody with. If you know that they are going through something, they can't hardly get over it for whatever reason. But we know the answers in God. We know that no matter what the situation is, if, if we can begin to, and you can say, you can tell somebody that, you know, that, look, you need to trust God. You need to put your hands in his hand, you know. And this, that's what we have to do. I, I'm learning that. I mean, you just have to put it. You can't fix everything, right. you know. But you can put it, you can, you can put God in it. You can tell God, you know, let him know that, look, God, that's, that's as far as I can go with this. But you can help me. And I believe God helps his people. Yes. So I'm just so thankful today. I'm just really thankful that, uh, oh, that I'm in a place where I know I can get help. You know, that's, uh, it's not just on the way, but we got help already. It is help on the way. You know, we got help coming. We got more help coming if we can just, but get, you know, get our sights on that, you know. There's more help coming. And that's what I want to be. I want to be here. I want to be here and see God blessing his people and see, the, see the, uh, whatever the end is. However it's going to turn out with God, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. So anyway, I'm thankful today.
Okay, let's pray. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. Yes, we need need to pray. I know Sister Thier, Thier, she lost her brother, right? She lost her brother. So remember them in prayer. I just think about that. Uh, you know, that's <clears throat> part of what happens to us sometimes. We, of course, we I just lost my sister, but anyway, uh, I'm in, come from a big family, 10 kids, and we're down to five. So in a way, uh, that happens. And uh, I got two sisters older than me, and I got two younger. No boys. All the boys are gone but me. But anyway, uh, you know, anybody have a uh, prayer request? Sister Chelsea. Remember that, Sister Amaran. Okay. All right. Okay, let's, let's all remember that. Or anybody else? Brother Matt. Brother Daniel, pray for him. Uh, Sister Donna, Sister Donna, remember her. Sister. Uh, Michael, Michael, yes. Okay. Remember Sister Jew and Brother Mike. Sister Hannah had her hand up. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. It's the same. <laughs> All right. Okay. Brother. Jacob. All right. Good to see Brother Stan. I know he's been working a lot, but good to see him out today. And, uh, uh, yes, yeah, Sister Richie and her children. Good to see them here today. It's affected his brain where he's he's talking like 20 uh, well if he's awake he's talking but it ain't he ain't making a lot of it's not coherent it's not making a lot of sense so you know some people can come back from that and some people don't and of course he's 88 so he's up in age and so but the family certainly needs prayer and the church there in Keswick does too and um, and let's see who else was I going to mention here today? Of course.
course, Brother Mark Boyd's out of town working. Brother Theory's out of town working today. And um, Brother Green, yeah, he that really the work in the Dominican Republic. They there's just a lot going on over there right now. There's there's new churches coming in. There's just a Brother Green's got a couple new churches trying to come in in the Santiago area and uh, he's working in Igwe and Constanza and San Pedro de Marco Lis. There's He's just got quite a bit going on right now and of course Brother brother Elias Ciprian does too. Uh, he's got a, a man, new man and wife pastor that's come in under his ministry that's got a brother that has a church in Panama that is interested in this message and this people and so then brother William Ortiz over in uh, uh, Puerto Rico he of course we've got something started over there but we need to get over there and see them. Then we've got a family in Chile that wants us to come over there and start a church. And There's just a lot going on right now in the body of Christ, and we need to pray. But also, I think we really need to pray for our church right now with this new Delta variant that has spiked things up. I just think we need to really pray that God will help us to have the wisdom to to, to do what's sensible and be careful. Uh, you know, I asked Sister Sherry to have the the teams, breakfast teams, to go back to wearing masks downstairs. And if it gets bad, we may need to wear masks even up here. Of course, right now in our in our pews, everybody's family's in the same pew, so they're together anyway. But we, we just need to be as careful as we can right now. And we, we just don't want... We've been fortunate. We're not exempt, but we haven't had that. We, no, nobody in this church has, has got COVID in this church. Uh, you know, So that's been a great blessing from God. But I know that you know, we're, we're not, we've just been fortunate and we've been careful. And I, I just want to encourage you to keep doing the same. Uh, so let's pray that God will help us in all these conditions. I can tell Brother Smith has a has a uh, burden for the Latino people down. You know, I listen to him on Monday nights, and uh, not just Mexico, but anyway, they got other other countries that uh, that uh, you know it's a burden. I believe, uh, but God apparently is in it, so just have to just keep praying, uh, keep our hearts open. To God, and I pray. Any, any other prayer requests? But anyway, let's let's stand. I guess the ushers we go and do the do the offering, and uh, pray that God will help His people. Father in heaven, thank you, oh God, for this day that you've given us. I ask that you help each need. Lord, we come before you this day, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Precious Hallelujah. Savior, Lord, we thank you. Thank you, God, for this. Day. Oh, Hallelujah. blessed be your holy name, oh God. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord. Merciful Savior, merciful Savior. Oh, God. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, blessed be you. Oh, Lord, hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, blessed be you. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, Jesus. Mercy of the Savior. Watch over us. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you,
right. I don't know if she was done yet or not. I think she wanted to keep singing. (laughs) All right. That's like that's what I like. I like to see God's people get involved in what they're doing and enjoy it. <laughs> Praise God. Well, we have you know. I mean, I our, our we have when we have Bible study downstairs. We have uh, Sister Hannah's been teaching the youth, these young ones. But right now, she's pulling back from that because. She's working in the COVID with the COVID patients at Children's Hospital, and it's really bad right now. There, there's children dying with COVID. Of course, they're too young to have the vaccines, and and so they're all unvaccinated. And and uh, I guess this variant is there, and we don't really know. We're all you know about all this yet, and so. That's why she's not playing in the band. She's just trying to be, you know, careful, thankful they're able to come to church, but they're, she's staying, you know, distancing and wearing their mask and all. And, and, of course, anyone's welcome to wear a mask if you feel like you should wear it. Like I said, we're, we're spaced out enough in here and on the same rows as just family that are all together all the time anyway. So that's how we're trying to keep it spaced out to where we're not, uh, you know, we're spaced distancing or have our churches big enough to do that. But at the same time, you know, if it gets if the, if this thing gets real bad, we then we do need to even be more careful. Maybe go back to wearing masks, especially until we're set down and to know that we're spaced out far enough from one another. I think we. We need to honor one another. Wasn't it Jesus that said that the whole law hangs on this right here? That every man love his brother as himself. <laughs> Just think, that was the purpose of the law. The, the, the law of God, uh, the whole law was to promote that very thing that we're to have love one to another. We're to love our brothers just like ourselves. Now that's that. That's a pretty hearty saying, wouldn't you say? That <clears throat> you know, Paul said that about husbands and wives. That if men are to love them, wife, their wives, he said, no man ever hated his own flesh. He ought to love his wife as himself. <laughs> well, it's easy to love your wife. Maybe you're you're with her. You you know. Uh, in fact, I'll tell you, you know, the longer you're married, if God will help you, you know, it takes this statement where man's to leave his mother and father and be joined to a wife and them two to become, be one flesh. That don't happen just when you first get married. In fact, you know, it, it's going to take God's help to have that kind of unity over period of time and I'm you know I'm thankful Sister Smith and I've been together 53 years and you know I I can tell you I love her a whole lot more now than I did 53 years ago I was now she was she was a pretty little thing she's still pretty I think she's prettier now than she was then in a lot of ways even even naturally she's maintained her beauty but but uh, I, you know, we were young, and and uh, but we weren't in unity. You know, I remember first time I ever picked her up for a date. We stopped at a filling station to get gas, and and she went inside to I believe it was a Seven Eleven store, and when she came back out, she came out and just stood over at the passenger door. I said, "Get in," she said. Open the door for me. I said, I'm already in the car. Just open it and get in. She wouldn't do it. And so I was so foolish, I drove off and left her standing there. 
And uh, I said, get in or I'm going to leave. She wouldn't do it. So I took, we had a standoff right then, right at the very jump go of this deal. Well, I just drove around the block and went back and got her, but I did have to get out and open the door if I remember right. I think, I think I did cave right there, but... Um, <laughs> well, you know, I was interested in her, and I thought, well, I, you know, I'll have to take me a little while to get her broke in. <laughs> That's what I was thinking, because she was thinking the same thing about me. So, <clears throat> you know, I... She was a, you know that song Buck Owens sung? I've got a tiger by the tail, it's plain to see. That was my song for a little while. I, I, She hadn't got rid of all that yet, has she? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, let's get on something else that's more religious. <laughs> Let me get back on to loving your bro- your neighbor just like, your, like you love yourself. <clears throat> uh, but, and I do believe you know, the Lord does want us to develop a place to where we have a love, a really a genuine love for not only not only our our brother in the Lord, I think we ought to have a love. Jesus had a love and a pity and a compassion for those that were without, without God. You know, Brother Tally was talking about how uh, blessed we are. You know, it's just, we we don't realize sometimes how blessed we are that somehow God was able to reach us. His mercy and His grace was able to reach down and touch our lives, and God was, uh, you know, we were just fortunate in that way. That, and I've said this many times that if you're serving God today or you're in the house of God, somebody. More than likely, I would say way more than 90% of the time, somebody in your ancestry prayed for you. Somebody influenced your life. God heard somebody's prayers. God reached down and touched your life. I was thinking about Brother Doug York just this week about that song that he wrote and sung, Thank You Mama, uh, for your time on bended knees. I remember he wrote that in Winters, Texas when I was, he got saved and got the Holy Ghost there. And uh, I preached that morning on, on the grace of God, the mercy and grace of God and how it touches someone's your life. And I just showed how somebody laid up mercy for your life. And he, he come up with that song after I preached that message and it, it was always a blessing. It always blessed when he sang it. Uh, and I was taught that. I was taught that actually after I come among these people. I never had anybody talk to me about that before. How that, you know, that somebody prayed. Somebody, uh, you know, somebody prayed for their family. Somebody prayed for their children. Some grandma prayed for their grandkids. Some aunt, some uncle. I had a, I had a, uh, an aunt and an uncle, my mother's older sister, Aunt Maybell. <laughs> I always get tickled at all those names, you know. Thalma and Maybell and uh, Bonnie Louise and Bertha Marie. Uh, that was my aunts. That was the four girls in my mama's family. And, and uh, But Aunt Maybell was married to her husband, Irvin Jewell, Uncle Irvin, he had more influence on me as a young man than any man that I'd ever been around in my life. He was just a godly, God-fearing man. Just He served God, uh, and he just had a conviction to serve God all of his life. 
and it, it, it affected me. Uh, that influence affected me. I came up around it. You know, I have to give my mother credit because she was a, a spirit-filled Holy Ghost woman that stayed in church and kept us kids going to churches and tent meetings and sawdust floor meetings and all of that influenced me. But there was no man that influenced me any more than that one man, my Uncle Irvin Jewell. And uh, God's grace reached out and touched me. We're, that's how we're blessed, like, just like these kids right here. Sometimes I feel like these kids feel like, you know, I never had a chance to make a decision to serve God. I've been in church all my life. It's expected of me. They, they don't realize that that is because they're the most blessed children on the face of the earth, that they would be brought up uh, around God's people and around the, the Spirit of God and the Word of God and worshiping God. And, uh, uh, you know, it, it's because of God's blessings and His grace and His mercy that has been able to reach us. There's people, do you realize today, there's people that God has no way to reach them, not unless He just individually decides, I'm going to touch this person. And he can do that, but that's not God's normal way of doing it. God's normal way of doing it is, is you're in the family of God and you're influenced by God and the godliness, God-likeness, God's ways by your family and your, the people of God that you're around. And then you will affect other people that you're around in life and hopefully some of them will be influenced, you know, by you. And Brother, I think, was it Brother Tally that mentioned that sometimes things happen to us, like Paul said in, in uh, 2 Corinthians 1, isn't it, when he said, whereby you can comfort others with the same comfort that you were comforted with. God, God takes us through things, and hopefully, that's one of the things I've always felt like, God, Help me, I, I, you know, experience is a great teacher, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Let me tell you a better teacher than experience. Being able to follow instruction. Being able to learn from somebody else's experience. Being able for somebody to help you, to help you prevent, help prevent you from going through something they've been through. That's a, greater, that's a greater learning than it just experience itself. It's a better learning. Some things. I mean, there's some, there's some things we, we need to experience, but you don't need to experience evil. You don't need to experience rebellion. You, you don't need to experience the corrupt things that are in this world. Jesus, listen, he said this in Psalms. This is a quote talking about Jesus when he said, my foot did nigh slip had I not seen, uh, when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. But he said, but when he went into the house of God and saw their end. <laughs> he didn't have to experience what they were, he was going through a test. It, it, it almost took him down. Looking at how, here I am going through all this suffering and here I see ungodly people just prosper and things that they're not worthy of. But when he, looked, when he went to the house of God and saw their end, and he saw that, you know, there may be a pleasure in sin for a season, but, but like Moses said, he chose to suffer with the children of Israel <clears throat> uh, and not, not go the way of pleasure and sin for a season. I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful that I can be, you know, I can get things from y'all. I can get things from these men and men of God and women of God, saints of God. I can listen to their testimonies and that can help me. Uh, there's so many things that's been planted in my life that's held me. Uh, you know, Jesus was, he was, when John saw him, 
uh, in a vision on the Isle of Patmos, he was girded with a golden girdle. <laughs> you know what a girdle is? It, it, it girds you up. You know, I mean, I know, uh, you know, I, I know the used, women used to have girdles that help hold their bellies in, you know, make them look thinner than what they were. But, but you can have a girdle support you. He, he was girded with a golden girdle. It's just a picture of how that the, the precious Word of God and however it's uh, afforded to you. In other words, however, whether it's through somebody's testimony, what, you know, somebody's influence of, of God that's been in their life that helps, you to, helps to support you, gird you. That golden girdle is the righteousness of God's word that's, that girded Jesus through his life on this earth. He didn't, he didn't have that as a little bitty child. He had to grow into that. He had to develop into that. Uh, Hebrews in the fifth chapter says, though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things that he suffered. He went through things. God, you know, in other words, there were things that he had to suffer himself, not to get involved with. He had to maintain righteousness, what God was requiring of him. Jesus did have, he had a, a requirement on him that you and I don't have. We, we should have it as we finally, God finishes his work in us. But Jesus was like the first man, Adam. Jesus was in a garden of Eden condition with his father. God required that of him. He was, what is it, Isaiah, wasn't it Isaiah that said that he was a, a uh, root out of dry ground. He was... Uh, he was born uh, in, uh, out of season. He wasn't born in season. What was in season was sin. Uh, sin was rampant in that Jewish world when Jesus came to this world. But he was a root out of dry ground. In other words, the condition of the world was dry. It, righteousness was a famine. You couldn't find anybody that could live a righteous life. But Jesus... He was born, God put him here in this world and God had not only the responsibility but he had the right to raise up his son the way he wanted to. This wasn't another man's son that another man could take uh, uh, authority over but this was the son of God that came to this world and God had a, he had a right to raise his son up and work with him and help him even though... <clears throat> Even though Jesus, he wasn't, uh, he had to live by faith. Jesus, Jesus wasn't, it wasn't like, you know, God talked to him every day and he had such a great advantage. No, he had to live by faith. God did speak to him at times. God had the angels talk to him at times. He had experiences in God, but not enough that caused him to be able to, that he was exempt from having to live by faith or be tempted. In fact, let's, let's read that scripture. I'm, I got up to close the service, but y'all got me wound up. It's y'all's fault. <laughs> I'm not going to talk for just a minute. Um, what was the scripture I was wanting? What was I talking about? <clears throat> I wanted in, in it's in the book of Hebrews in first uh, in the second chapter I believe let's read in the second chapter here <clears throat> in the In the, let's start in the, wow. Let's start in the, the seventh verse. <clears throat> this is talk, This is God 
uh, that's making this statement. Thou madest him a little lower than the angels. Thou crownest him with glory and honor and did set him over the work of thy hands. Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet. For in that he hath put all in subjection under him, he left nothing that was not put under him. But now we see not yet all things put under him. Now let's, let's, let's elaborate on that for just a minute. Even though God gave Jesus, he made him the head of the church, he put him over everything, and everything was to be subject to him. But what Paul's saying here is, even though God did that, we're not, we don't see everything in subjection to him yet. Everybody's not in the proper subjection under Jesus. That's, that's not what we're seeing right now. Verse 9 says, But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels, for the suffering of death. See, an angel can't die. In fact, uh, in fact, I'll give you a scripture on that in Luke 20, 36. Let's just cover that right quick. <clears throat> Luke 20 and 36, and I'll go back to, to, to Hebrews here in a minute. But Jesus said this, but they, and, and this is in Luke 20 and 35, says, but they which shall be accounted worthy to obtain that world and the resurrection from the dead neither marry nor are given in marriage, neither can, um, neither can they die anymore. I need to back up because you're not going to get what I'm saying here if I don't back up. You remember the Pharisees and Sadducees, what they did is they asked him the question, uh, if, a, if a woman's married to a man, he dies, and then, then, then she gets married again, whose wife she going to be in the resurrection? So <clears throat> that's what he says in the 33rd verse. Let me start there, Luke 20, 33. It says, therefore in the resurrection, whose wife of them is she? For seven have had her. They said, what if she'd been married seven times? And Jesus answered and said unto them, The children of this world marry and are given in marriage, but they which shall be accounted worthy to obtain that world and the resurrection from the dead neither marry nor are given in marriage, neither can they die any more. For they are equal to the angels and are the children of God being the children of the resurrection. Uh, so he's, he used angels there to show, show they're going to be like the angels. They're not going to die anymore. They can't die because they've already got, they already have life. Well, God created angels. Uh, he, God created angels uh, as a help. They're, those are helpers. Those are servants to those that are heirs of righteousness. They weren't created like man with a will to do their own will to have a free will. But they were created as God's servants to serve him and help him serve those that he's going to have as, who is going to, was made after his image. See, we're made after God's image. We, we, we're, God made us so free. This is a magnificent thing about God. That God he, don't, he didn't make it. Just think about it for a minute. If God made you, I've had people ask me, you know, I've asked people like this, how are you going to go to heaven in the condition you're in? And I've had people tell me, well, God's going to change me. I said, when's he going to do it? They said, well, when I die, God will change me. I said, then you're going to be a puppet. God's going to fix you where you can't be you. You won't have a free will. You're going to have to do whatever God says. And why didn't God just make us that way to start with if that's how it's going to be? But I said, no, you're wrong. God made us with a free will and we can choose righteousness. In fact, Brother Talley quoted that scripture in the first chapter of, of Hebrews here where God said, that I have, he told Jesus this, said, I've anointed you with jo the joy of, uh, 
the oil of gladness that you might, how did he say it? I've, I've anointed you with the oil of the joy of gladness because you've hated iniquity, loved righteousness, and hated iniquity. God anointed him with the oil. That's oil, that's understanding. In the Bible, it, it's, depict, it's depicted of, of understanding because it, 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 it's like the olive oil that went in the, the uh, candlestick in the holy place and they, they, they would light that olive oil and it would give forth light. And that's what oil, really it's knowledge, but when God touches it, it becomes understanding. When God gives you knowledge of the Word of God and God anoints that and quickens it to you, it's, it's like light. It's like this little song that our, you just got through singing. This little light of mine. That's because if you got light, you've got understanding because of the knowledge of God that God's gave you. Okay, anyway, I wanted to go back to Hebrews, the second chapter, and the ninth verse, where he says, not everything's put under him yet, but we see Jesus, who is made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. <clears throat> Let me read just a little bit more. For it became him. For whom are all things, and by whom are all things, in bringing many sons unto glory, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For both he that sanctifieth, and he that, and, and they who are sanctified are all of one. For which cause he's not ashamed to call them brethren, saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren, in the midst of the church will I sing praise unto thee. This is, this is a quote from Psalms, Jesus talking. And again, I will put my trust in him, my father. And again, behold, I and the children which God hath given me. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also likewise took part of the same, that through death, he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil. God sent Jesus to this earth and he became a human. He took part of the same, that is, partakers of flesh and blood. That through death, he couldn't have died if he hadn't became a human. But he became a human and that made him subject to death. that through death he might destroy him that had power of death, that is the devil. God, Jesus came to this world to destroy evil, to destroy sin. And deliver them who through the fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Bondage of the sinful nature of Adam. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. Wherefore in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. For in that he himself hath suffered being tempted, he is able to secure them that are tempted. In other words, Jesus... He was tempted. Now there's, there's just no such thing as a templeless temptation. He was, he was tempted. Get, you need to get that. You need to get the understanding that Jesus was tempted to sin. And if he was tempted, he could have done it. Adam was tempted and Adam did it and failed. But Jesus, he was girded with a golden girdle. God touched him in such a way. God, he, he influenced him in such a way. I think God did everything possible to help his son to reject wickedness and reject sin and to live a righteous life, yet he did not, he never crossed the boundary of causing his son not to have to have faith. He had to live in faith. He, he had to know what it was like to be a human, 
yet born of God and yet be, be obedient to God, God's instructions and God's information and God's help. And his understanding girded him to a point that he was, he was supported and girded up with God's influence over his life. He was the first man that ever lived on this earth as a human that was born of God. And he came here for the explicit reason that you and I could be born of the same spirit of his father, that we could be born again, and that God could work the same work in us that he worked in his son Jesus. <clears throat> the difference is, is we've got, we've got an Adamic nature. We were born of Adam. In other words, we're, we, when, when we're born again, uh, uh, brother, brother Gene Sugg wrote a song in Fort Worth one time. He said, there's two, there's two people living down inside of me. <laughs> one is, uh, living for God, the other one wants to be free. That's, that's Adam and, and, and that's that Christ spirit that we're born of, the spirit of God the Father. That, you know, I've got, I've got this Adamic nature in me. I was born with it. The psalmist said a man is just a few days and full of trouble. <clears throat> that's that Adamic nature. As little kids, that, that's just hard to believe that Mallory, you know, it ain't going to be too many days she's going to have trouble her mama, somebody will have to, they'll have to, they have to spank her little hands one of these days. She'll be doing something, they'll tell her, don't do that, and she'll just say, mm, let me see. <laughs> and they'll have to slap her little hand, and she's already in trouble. Well, that's that nature that's in her. But there's another nature that can come in us, and that God can change all of that, and give us the oil of gladness. This, this, Wonderful knowledge of the Word of God, quickened knowledge. It becomes understanding that will gird our lives and touch us. Praise God. Well, I didn't really get up here to say all that, but but I said it, and I'm, I'm and 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 that's uh, that's my position. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Praise God. All right. Uh, is it Chelsea? Is that right? Is your name Chelsea? So it's another Chelsea. Chesley. All right. We're sure glad you and the children are here today. And uh, so I'll, I'll have to get their names. <clears throat> Samuel, Anna Lee, and Natalie. Madeline. Is it Madeline with an M? N, Madeline. All right. And Anna Lee, she's the one with the, she come out with that light hair. Anna Lee. And Madeline, and now what's the boy's name? Samuel. Oh, I, I can remember that. <laughs> all right. God bless your hearts. Let's all stand and give a God a praise before we go home. Hallelujah. Lord, we're thankful for your goodness to us. Your many blessings, oh God. God, take your word, apply it to our lives that we could be girded up with that golden girdle just like your son Jesus. Oh God, work that in our lives, Jesus. Go with your people today. God, lead in them and guide them, oh God, in the way that you would have them trod. We love you and we give you praise today. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, God bless your hearts. Shake hands and be friendly.